Ari's in the car with me, Ari Zoldan, the famous Ari Zoldan. Yeah, yeah, hardly. I'm we're, here with Barry Schwartz, the legendary Barry Schwartz. And we're coming back from JTank. It was a good experience. Thanks for uh, you know making me feel comfortable there. No, it was amazing. It was amazing. And Barry was once again a superstar. Super, super and star at the same time. Superstar. It's amazing. And now I get to spend an hour and 51 minutes in the car with Mr. Schwartz driving back to Muncie. It's a crazy amount of time, right? <laughs> it's a lot of quality time. Quality time, but quality it's a time. lot of a lot of quality time. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Awesome. It's gonna be great. See Thanks. you later. Bye. Here's a quick shout out to our sponsor, Blue Array Academy. SEO training for in-house or agency side staff from UK's largest specialist SEO agency, Blue Array who have now open sourced their expertise. The Blue Array team, including senior leadership, have directly contributed to the courses and is action-based so people can learn and implement from day one. The Blue Array Academy will give you or your team the skills needed to really excel at SEO, gain accredited certification, and ultimately deliver better ROI. Check them out at blueArrayacademy.com. That's blueArrayacademy.com. All right, so I'm with Ari Zoldan. Ari, can you tell people who you are? Yes, I am Ari Zoldan. How's that for an opening? Perfect, and uh, <laughs> where do you work? I work, I'm the CEO of Quantum Media Group. We're based in New York. We're an international marketing firm, and we work with different, uh, different industries from consumer products to automotive to technology. We're always learning, we're always evolving. Um, we love, most of all, we love the journey and we love working with people that understand marketing. They don't necessarily know how to do it, but they understand that they need it. And that's where that's where we come in. I mean, you're talking about journey and as you can see, we're in the car, Ari's driving. He's a very busy guy, so he keeps getting phone calls while we're driving. It's so spam. They're, they're all spam from under this, us. This is a vlog, so we take it as we, as we go, so. There's no editing, Barry, right? No editing. Yeah. Everything you say is gonna be shown to millions and millions of people, because well, I have hundreds of thousands of followers. There, there hundreds of millions of followers, like PewDiePie. A gazillion. I, can I just share an experience? So, you know, Barry's a very, very modest guy. He's very, very humble. People in the community don't get what a superstar he is within the industry, and um, it's just, it's a great conversation piece, I feel like, when I'm sitting around the, the Shabbos table or I'm sitting in a meeting, and when other industry experts say, huh, you know Barry Schwartz? like the conversation stops I said yeah why he's like oh he's like Barry Barry's like a Barry's like a super ninja and I was like not only do I know him I said but we're neighbors and our kids play together they're just completely in awe so I'm actually I'm honored to be in a car spending two hours right now going back to Muncie with the Barry Schwartz no so this is the, the Ari Zoldan he's like a marketing <laughs> mogul technically a JTAG mogul and we all went to this thing called J JTAG which is kind of the Jewish version of Shark Tank except and better it's better because Ari's on it. No, no, no. And, uh, Ari, you know, I'm sarcastic and it goes well. It's, it's going to be a fun uh, car hazard ride. Hazard reported back. ahead. And there's a hazard ahead somewhere. <laughs> um, but um, this is fun because we're doing this in the car and Ari and I are neighbors. So it was, it's just great to be able to do this. So let's talk a little about your history. So talk about, tell people about your little, your history in, in, I guess, your professional history. My professional history, it hasn't started yet. And I'm, and I'm 40 and I'm 43 but um, okay turn turn back the clock I started in telecommunication always had a passion for technology uh, was in telecom moved into fixed wireless moved into e-commerce uh, and then over the years as being a, a startup guy I never really knew how to market any of my companies that I started and some failed some thank God were successful, but a lot of them kind of teetered somewhere in the middle because I, I didn't really know how to market myself or market my companies. P.S. I started networking and meeting people in the television space, other journalists and print publications, and I kind of got very quickly um, the secret sauce in, in media. And obviously the, the more exposure you have, the better chances of, of the success of your company and at the end of the day it's a lot about building credibility in the media and positioning yourself as an industry expert and I think Barry knows very well about this once you come off obviously not self-promoting and as a, as a true industry expert I think business slowly comes to you very very organically right you're not gonna have to advertise yourself because the go-to person for XYZ industry is is this person based on their their reputation so 
reputation for me is everything and um, I think it's just a very important lesson to to impart to your it's, fine it's audience. It's definitely a great point. The only problem that I have with that is that I write and my reputation is around SEO and search marketing and yet I don't sell SEO and search marketing. So that's, that's my, that's, I didn't take it through like Ari says, you got to take it through. So learn from Ari and take it through. But, but, but you're passionate about that, aren't you? I'm passionate, I'm passionate about a lot of things. So one thing is actually, it's funny cause it's like Ari is like a personal friend in communities. We go to the same synagogue and so forth. But I, I don't, I don't, he actually prays and concentrates. I'm, I'm like a fruit fly. Uh, I, I have no patience and no, and I usually sit by the door. Yeah, but no, he's he's dedicated week, week no, in and week out. That. <laughs> Whatever, this is not to, This isn't a religious conversation. It's not a religious conversation, right. um, but hopefully you'll bless me later. Um, <laughs> but but it's it's, it's uh, interesting because Ari is all things marketing, and I'm very very focused. And let's talk about that a little bit. Yes. What do you think about what do you think about could you could you become an industry expert about all things digital? Or is it easier to, to focus? Or what do you recommend to people who are trying to become industry experts? You can't be the you know no one can be the jack of all trades, right? They say the master of none. Um, the more focused you are, the more industry specific you are. It's a lot easier to be able to also brand yourself, right? I mean, today if if I were to brand myself as a d digital expert, well, it's me and. 14 gazillion other people but if I get very very specific and I say that I'm a digital expert specifically in the fintech space you, you kind of drill down a little bit a little bit not uh, cryptocurrency. finer not cryptocurrency I'm kind of on the fence with crypto but but I think Barry you understand like you've built a reputation for building apps you know and and great phenomenal apps and I've never seen an advertisement for your app service other than just your your mere reputation I mean would you would you agree with that? It's funny because the people who are watching this probably have no clue that I build software or build apps. Um, so it's funny. The people who are probably watching this in our community probably have no clue about SEO or apps or whatever. So it's just funny that how people perceive you are based on, you know, the different communities you're part of. Um, so. And it's a lot of it is public perception. It's true. I don't think most people know that you build apps. Right. And, and maybe that's. But nobody in our community knows what you do. I, 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 don't, guy in the yeah, I don't know. I don't but know after either. this video, they're all going to know. We're going <laughs> to have a synagogue event and have everybody <laughs> watch this. <laughs> exactly. I love that. But it's very interesting, Barry. You're actually saying something interesting. You've, you've also, right, you branded yourself as an SEO expert. You said you, you've you been blogging for how many years? Almost 16 years. December will be 16. And how consistent, what's the frequency like? My, my frequency is on average between 6 to 12 stories a day. Not including the videos, not including the other stuff. It's just, yeah, a lot of a lot of writing. That's incredible. I don't know anyone on this planet that has been blogging consistently for 16 years. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, how do you become an industry expert? I just I spoke a few days ago at uh, at NYU, and uh, it was a marketing <coughs> class, and a lot of the students were asking, well, you know, how do I break into XYZ industry. So I said the first thing you need to do is position yourself as an industry expert. So they said, well, you know, I don't have an expertise in, you know, XYZ. I said, well, you know, it will take you a very, very short amount of time to become an expert. And then they said, well, what do you mean? I said, the first thing you need to do is to start reading up on an industry that you're passionate about. And once you do that, you simply start a blog. Right, and as you write content over and over and over again, like what Barry's been doing for 16 years, by sheer nature, you become an expert on the in the industry. Because anyone can go on TV, anyone can go on radio, but if you think about how many people actually make the effort and sit down and pen an 800 word article. So I think people see that that there's some intelligence in that. There is, and thankfully, I don't write 800 word articles. Um, and thankfully, when I started doing it, there was really not much competition in the blogging space. Um, I just did it to keep notes on what the search community was talking about. So I don't really have a goal when I did it, uh, nor do I have a goal today when I do it. I think people asking you the question, how do I, be, how I become an industry expert, is the wrong way to go about it. Um, I think they should be like, I love this specific topic or I love this specific uh, tactic. I'm a Photoshop expert. I'm a, I don't know, Instagram expert or whatever it might be. Um, and then when you become an expert, if your personality is about sharing, then it's just natural for you to either start a YouTube channel, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell, <laughs> um, or <laughs> or to you know start a blog, which probably most people don't do blogging these days because nobody likes to write anymore. Which read. is all the more reason you should, right? Maybe, yeah. I mean, Instagram is very popular, um, and you know TikTok. That's where it's at today. That's where all the kids are. So um, do you have a TikTok account? I do not. Yeah, I, I mean, just downloaded TikTok for the first time. 
Don't tell anybody. That's public news. Actually, I have to edit, edit that out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I just did, and then I realized I'm I'm in the wrong uh, the wrong space. So uh, I have to take out that app. I don't think there's any value for me in, in TikTok. But um, there will be a huge value for brands, and I bet brands are going to be we're in the process of jumping on that right now. What do you think? I don't know anything about TikTok. I'm sorry. We could do a dance. It's basically, you know, people yeah, dancing yeah. and doing music and stuff. I see some weird things around that. I guess brands could take advantage of it until it dies out. You think mm -hmm. it's the last TikTok? It's got like a billion plus uh, plus people on the platform already. Um, I, I think it has um, some stickiness to it. All right. So we got that other record. It's going to last. It's sticky. And what's today's date? November 7th. But this video will probably will go out for another few months. So. <laughs> but but, <laughs> but uh, it's going to have some stickiness. Questions: how long is it going to have some stickiness? I give it I give it four years. Four years. That's the average life of a moderate social network, you think? How long did Google Plus last? Uh, you tell me. You're the That's expert. Question. I, bet I don't it was think closer too long. To, I think it was closer to six. Yeah, probably. About, they had a lot of money. so. <laughs> um, anyway, I do miss Google Plus. I think Ari does as well. He has to say that because he's on his channel. <laughs> I mean, we sh like to keep these videos around 15 minutes or so with all the JTAG stuff going on. I, I was hoping like 150 minutes continuously. Barry has a long time. Everybody want to watch for 150 minutes? <laughs> What else do you want to talk about? So I, I wanted to actually ask you a, a couple of questions. I've um, me and my wife around the table. We often talk about your hair um, because, quite frankly, I'm very jealous. Very, very jealous. And it, you know, if I were to have the running conversations, if I were to have Barry's hair, like where would I be in life? And I think I'd be in a very, very different place. You think? You think your hair is holding you back, or, I think I, or it's I, hurting? Like, well, having well, I, my hair hurts would hurt you. <laughs> no, it would. It would help me. You it think it would, it, help it you? would enhance my confidence. I mean, I look at your hair. I just want to. I don't know what I want to do, but I, I'm in complete. It's I, so I'm funny. Just, I'm very jealous, and I think most 40, 50 year olds, you know, look at hair obviously as a, as a, as a serious I, value add. And I look at your your hair, and I'm like, I'm I, like I think I had this hair because I couldn't care less. I think I don't know if I told you this. I told some people, nobody on this video I've ever seen this but when I was a kid in high school I had a teacher who was short really really like round and bald and suspenders he kind of looked like Humpty Dumpty I'm like that's what I'm going to look like when I get older that was my goal and, and I you're have just the, you're crazy, just the opposite well I'm pretty round but um, I don't have suspenders but I do want to get suspenders my wife won't let um, but, but I do have most, a lot of hair you have the most amazing hair would you agree um, like this video share it if you agree <laughs> that Barry has comment the most below, amazing hair comment below let me know <laughs> really like when you wake up in the morning do you do you like no. run your fingers through your hair and say wow I love my hair no it's a, it's, a, it's a, I w honestly I wouldn't mind being completely bald because I wouldn't have to do anything I, do, I don't do anything I literally I'll take a splash of water on it take my hands push it down you see, look, look, look at my hair. There's nothing there. It's just all over the place. But you're so like, you know, like most men, again, 40 or 50 years, like wish they had a fraction of the... Uh, materialistic of stuff, like I, the way you're I not, look, you're not into clothing, it. it's not it's not my thing. I love gadgets like this camera and other other things, but when it comes he's to clothing... So he's so modest. He's so a, humble. No. I'm he's not, so I'm humble. I'm not so humble. You know? Right. Those are the real, like, I think, leaders. You know, the people that are humble, the people that are modest, people that share their wisdom and part their knowledge. You want, so I, I could cut my hair and you could use it for years. <laughs> you need that. Give you a wig. Uh, not a bad idea. <laughs> I would take it, but yeah. I I get, as you know, I get a haircut once a qu once every quarter. Um, Is that true? Yeah, usually when I pay my estimated taxes. Ah. That reminds me, I'm paying estimated right. taxes. No, it's 100%. When I pay my estimated taxes, I'm like, oh, I need a haircut. <laughs> Who gives um, you your haircut? Ah, uh, wherever around the corner, $12, something like that. It's mm -hmm. fairly cheap. Mm -hmm. um, but no, my wife wishes I dressed a little bit better, uh, presented myself a little bit better, but yeah, whatever. You look better. You look great. But nothing like look at look at this suit. Ah, uh, please. And what, you, you have the hair. Undandy. What's the what's the brand of shoes? Let's you got you plug. got you got Undandy. Unda Undandy. Yes. Undandy. Barry got Undandy are, shoes. Thanks to Hello Fold. I reach out to you. Collab. We're gonna do a collab when I go to Israel. He's another YouTuber. Check him out. Hello Fold Station. I don't know if it's called Telephone Station, but Telephone. Hill Z Fold? Hill is, is that it? Hill, uh, I'm not sure. Hill Z Fold? Hill Z Fold. He talks about Israeli tech if you're interested in that. He's a good guy too. He shares a ton of information for free, um, constantly willing to help people no matter what. For he's free. helped lots of people. Lots of he's people. He's helped he's helped dozens and dozens of people. He's a great guy. Who so, else is great? Uh, Besides your your wife and my let's wife. Let's see, me, you, hello. Um, I'm sure there are other some great great people in this world, but other other <laughs> shout outs. Uh we saw him as a great guy. We saw him also, right? We saw him. We saw him yeah, also Wasab. like, you know, he, he helps SEO. a lot of people. He's not uh, he's not pub so public anymore. I think um, Eric Wu got to him and he's more secretive. But mm. Wasam used to be all the hangouts back in the day. <laughs> um, but yeah, 
it's 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 fun. So what else? Anything else you want to talk about? Or? No. So we're talking about um, comedians and what is it? Comedians in the car. Yes. Having coffee. Something having you know. Are they thing. having coffee? I never I said that. No, maybe it's just comedy. That's dangerous. Comedians. It is comedians in the car. I think that's well. We could be like SC. You know, SC marketing in the car. Digital um, marketers in the car driving. Yeah. Now it's still about an hour and a half. It's just we're just not moving. It's. You know, this could be very, very like we were talking about before in terms of finding the right right. A lot of people are producing video now. Question is, um, obviously, the, the there's great editing software, the great cameras today. The challenge is, how do you come up with a creative format, right? That's going to really, really work. Right? This is it. This is this is gold right here. We think so. But hopefully, B and H will be watching this. We'll get them to be a sponsor because they sponsor all the cool YouTubers. They do. Um, so B and H, if you're watching, hopefully you'll, you'll sponsor our channels. Send us a note. Um, and uh, Casey Neistat. Yes. Yes, he's somebody who I, I like his videos a lot. Do you like any YouTubers? Oh, Casey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've seen his stuff. He does the. Uh, he also has good hair. He has good hair. He has the blonde hair. Yeah. Who You're, has better hair? What do you think? You, uh, I'd say it's a tie. I mean, he's basically the the blonde version of, of you. Yeah, well, he's a little bit more fit than yeah, I am. But yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. You're, you're both. He sold out of New York. We're driving through New York City now. And if he's watching this, he sold out on this. We did not sell out of New York City. He moved to LA. Did he really? Yes. Casey, why? 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 For his family. He did it for a good reason. All right, he's a good man. He's a good man. But he's got a massive YouTube following. He does. Yes. Not but, like us. But, like, but he started it for the same reason because he loved to do it. He was passionate about it. And now he has this, um, what's it called? His lab. Um, three. Uh, he named, huh, I can't believe I'm not knowing this, some number. He has this lab where he's basically giving a lot of his resources and money and efforts to other YouTubers who are sprouting um, so that they can have the tools and resources necessary to start their YouTube channels and start their own careers. Nice. So, so we're just giving out money. Money and uh, professionalism and expertise and time. Yeah. Will he give like us money? Like, will he just give us money? I don't think he'll give us money. No. Uh huh. No. Well, so maybe. No case for it. Okay. I mean, I don't know if he's planting trees. He's needs the whole YouTube stuff that all these YouTubers, Mr. Beast and friends, I think PewDiePie planted 20 million trees in uh, mine. What's it called? Minecraft? What's it called? I forget. I'm not really with the game situation. Mm -hmm. So all these YouTubers are planting trees to reach 20 million trees. I think Elon Musk donated a million and so forth. Wow. Um, I think we, they're there. We have trees on our property. We, we live in Rockland County. Yes, we have lots so of trees. So we could take credit for it, right? We should we do have a video. so interest. many trees. We have a lot of trees. In fact, we have to get rid of our trees because there's so many. Because they fall, they fall constantly. They're constantly falling onto cars and houses because of this, the weather we have. As long as you make sure that your tree doesn't fall back onto our house. It's fine. Don't that, worry. That would be awkward. I mean, that would be kind of But awkward. the insurance will take care of it. Not mine. That's yours true. will. That's true. The rule is, <laughs> if a tree falls from my property onto your house yeah. or your car, your insurance has to cover it. Is that true? Yes, it is. You're not lying. Although not... Jewish law says the opposite. Hmm. So which one do you go with? That's interesting. Rabbi Ari. It depends who's, who's watching this video, <laughs> you know? But but that, that would be awkward. I mean, if, if we're in synagogue together and I turn to you, I was like, Mary, your, your tree just fell into my house. I, I don't mean to ask you, but you have to pay for my house, you know? A tree fell in my house. I have to remember to actually include the GIF. I made a GIF of a tree falling in my house. I'll try to include it into this video. That's great. There you go. Slide it in. Yeah. It was that, one of the that, better things that happened to me. They replaced I Allstate, that. Allstate Company. If you want to sponsor this video, you did great. You helped me out a lot, so thank you. They were good. They were great. Really, they handled professional, seamless, seamless. They were they were caring. They brought people out to make sure structurally the house was good. They were really good. So thank you, Allstate. Wow, kudos. That's a pretty big. Uh, it's a high compliment from Mr. Schwartz. But but I was thinking about it. Um, if a tree fell on my house and then I see you in synagogue and I you know that would be kind of an awkward conversation. You know, I'm like, hey, Barry, you know, you kind of destroyed my house. You know, the interesting thing with awkward conversations. Yeah. Is I enjoy them. You do? I do. Okay. I like like if you if it was like a weird situation between the two of us. Yeah. I would feel more comfortable about it. Seriously. Yeah. That's very. It's funny when people in like conference world have an awkward situation to deal with, and they have to do a speaker or a sponsor. I'm like I volunteer. I'm like give it to me. I'll do the job. <laughs> That's great. <clears throat> you didn't know that about Barry Schwartz no. Studio. So let me ask you: After 120 years, what do you want to be known for, Barry? <laughs> what is, What is going to say on your tombstone? Oh, seriously, you're asking me that I'm question? I'm being very serious. We're, we're going to get a little bit deeper no, over here. No, this is not, this no, is no, not no, where we're going. No, no, and, and then we could put a slide, a cut slide of like... <coughs> I don't know. I don't care. Oh, what, no, no, it's not. It's you not. Are known. Come on, Barry. No. You, this is an awkward conversation. This is I awkward. want to be known as like, a YouTuber with 100 million subscribers. <laughs> you want that on your you I know, want Barry that, Schwartz. Yes. You want that on your... I want, on your, I want the YouTube on plaque that they send people, the YouTube uh, <laughs> on my tombstone with 100 million subscribers. How about digital? I mean, digitalized. That would be interesting if your tombstone actually had like a digital screen on it. 
They could change dynamically. You could just stream my tweets all day long from my past. Or there the videos. Go. How creepy would that be? That's like a loop. You'll have a digital tombstone. That'd be, cre that'd be pretty creepy. Maybe you'll be the first one to do that. You heard they brought somebody's voice back of somebody's like parent father died, I think, and they used his voice recordings over the years to make an artificial father so that he could actually have a conversation with you using AI. So it sounds like your father's talking to you and answering questions like your father would, but he's not around anymore. Wow. So the, the speech pattern, the voice and the speech pattern, they were able to, to Everything, replicate. yeah. Even his personality is someone. Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. Wow. Yeah, I don't know how to comment on that, but that's quite, oh, come on. quite, quite fascinating. Nothing, nothing, nothing for me on that. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say about that. I'm trying to think what I want. You know, God willing, my family will live to you know 120. But um, yeah, what I want, I, I don't know. How, would you? Would you want that? No, I wouldn't want that. But yeah. what would you want on your tombstone? So you answer that. <sighs> wow. Uh, I'm good at asking questions and deflecting. So. Yeah, that's what I just did, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ping me, pong. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me let me bounce that back off at you. You know. That's so, from a digital marketing perspective, do you think SEO is a sham? Do I think it's a sham? Absolutely. SEO has a bad reputation, right? Why does it have a bad reputation? You don't think SEO has a bad reputation? I mean, as a somewhat of a you know an outsider. Yes, as an outsider. Absolutely not. What bad reputation does it have? I mean, every company <coughs> needs to optimize the, their presence online. What kind of, of course there's spammy, you know. Spammy, uh, yeah, spammy lots of spammers you know? out there. Yeah, but there's a lot of legitimate companies too that are writing content, putting out good video, and I think you know better than anyone, you know, you do it right, you do it once, and you stay the course. I think any any black, what are they called? Black? Black hats. Black hats or any anything gray just is gonna come back at you. You do it right, look, Google Webmaster, they, they produce a document, just follow the document. Right, I mean, easy know, peasy. Yeah, I mean, I'm oversimplifying it, but but it's true, right? You yeah. just you just you know make stay kosher, quality content, quality content all day long, and there's no like in life, there's no shortcuts, right? Um, and cheap is expensive. You do it right. Police reported ahead. You see, I'm see, that's we're gonna get busted now. We're Thanks for saying that. Exactly, and that I'm is speeding. proof SEO is not. Uh, why? Why? Why do you think as an insider? Why do you? No, think I just know there's lots of bad articles from different people near. The industry, the wider industry, has a, a more of a negative view of SEO because of the tactics SEOs have deployed over the years around spamming links, injecting links, hacking websites, um, content marketing techniques that maybe a little bit pushing it too far. It's more of like a real salesy thing, while also having some people hack into sites too. But that's, that's a But but that's the minority, I think. Barry. I no. hope so. Yeah. But I, I think the public perception. I'm gonna push back here. I don't agree with Barry on this one. That's why we're having a very, you know. Um, no, the public perception for, you know, forget industry experts. I mean, just for company, you know, people that have websites and, you know, no. I mean, I don't think SEO has any negative connotation. Of course, there's, you know, people within the industry that really, you know, a couple of bad apples there can really create problems, but, you know, you do it right. I mean, you do it right like anything else, no? Just for those watching, another Jewish tidbit. Black hatters in the Jewish religion <laughs> are actually kind of more a spiritual and yes. more religious, and supposedly more withholding of their of the religion than I guess white hatters. So whereas it's the opposite of the SEO industry. That's actually that's a very good. That's a good. That's a good. That's there you a go. good point. I like that. Cool. Well, good. Ari, I appreciate you doing this. My Since pleasure. It's pretty pretty dark. Can you tell people how they can follow you, where they can learn more about you. Yes, yes. Uh, follow me at arizolden.com. Uh, A-R-I-Z-O-L-D-A-N. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. I was on MySpace, so you could forget that. Um, and what other social networks? And not on Google Plus either, obviously. Um, and you could also stalk me and follow me on the street. Uh, I usually wear some crazy, very loud suits. So if yes. you don't find me online, follow me offline. I'm usually in Times Square. Awesome. Thank you, Ari. You too. Thanks, Barry.